Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am Cody. He is Andy. It is the 25th of June, about 3.30 Eastern time in the afternoon, 2.30 Central. Is that correct? I think so. Close enough. About Close 10 enough. Minutes. Close, Close enough. enough. What are you going to do? Within the same day. So we're here. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, we're right? Rocking. It's Tuesday. We're rocking. All right. We got that much going on. <laughs> it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. We got some new sound well, effects last, on the board. The last, yeah, we got some new sound effects on the board. That's pretty cool. I really like them. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Page, excited. Run, Page is running the sound effects board, so we don't know what we're going to get yeah, today. Pacing, it's probably a good thing that she's running it and not us. Because I don't think there'd be much talking going on. It would just be... Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's, that's it. Three we had, I think we had one of them came at request, didn't this one? I think so. August, August Milk. August three. Yikes. Eesh. What do you think here, boss? Uh, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, that's a, uh, didn't settle below $20, right? We weren't, did we settle limit down today? Uh, I believe so. So, oh, oh nine. We yeah, yep. we did. Yep. Oh, nine was limit. Okay. So, so we, we settled limit down. So that's going to be the lowest settle that we had going back until the 31st. Uh, oh no. 30th of May, right? You got to go place. back to the end of May until we've had to settle that low. Well, to your point. We've basically gotten below. We haven't gotten below twenty bucks yet, but we're super close. But this yeah. is starting to look like a nice little head and shoulders, isn't it? It is. So I'd say you'd say the neckline is right around here somewhere, where mm-hmm. basically where it broke out from, right here, right at the end of May. Just head and shoulders. Look out! I mean, this could get a little bit dicey, couldn't it? So you got this, and this. You're talking about getting probably back down around that. You know, where was July's low? Yikes! So it got down around nineteen. 30, 1940-ish. I was going to say, about, cash right now, I've got about 1940, maybe 1945 with premium. Yeah, so it's, but I mean, you look at like, if you just take the fib, like the Fibonacci of this whole right. move, you start talking about you know, between this half and, and two-thirds retracement, which I think you'd expect if you were to have a true head and shoulders that breaks through that neckline. And so the, I guess the confirmation is we settled limit today, so that's 2009. We need to open lower and then you know basically break through this this point which is basically 20 bucks where this market took off from right here and then it starts then it just turns and it could it could get a little bit nasty here i mean especially if cheese really starts to retrace i mean we're not i don't think we had this one slotted today but it's still worth looking at right since august starts pricing here pretty soon but this is the cheese and we're looking at how this was a pennant this turns into a breakout Mm-hmm. You know, you wait, you trade the breakout and you, you, you wait for that confirmation. So, you, you know, you're trading it like what worse than like right. with more confirmation. Technically, we have not broken out of that pennant, right? Correct. Correct. Tuesday. This so is, second, second so day of the week. We drew right? this. Yeah, we drew this last week. Haven't broken out, but we still have, you know, this big old gapper here and here. So yeah. going back to August. Yeah. If you had that breakout of the cheese and, you know, this would be a pretty healthy, you know, pretty nice head and shoulders, you'd have. The spot confirming a pretty nice chart here. So I guess to that point, it's e- even though we've had a significant break, you could still justify getting short. That RSI doesn't look like it's giving the bulls any favors right now. Mm-mm. No, and, and then it That's turns right. into a question of like you know the whole fundamental piece of it, right? It's domestic yeah. demand, some of the promotional stuff. Is that going to be enough? We had another milk production lower year over year, so there's you know there's that school of thought right now, right? Where it's you know, hey, it, it, are we if we break, how much really can we break? With milk production continuing to trend down, and we're heading into summer like grilling, et cetera. And, but again, the head and shoulders pattern, it's a cut and dry. Like, you want to be short that if we, you know, let's say we break this neckline, that's that would be like the indicator of you can go ahead and get short and kind of just put behind you too that the market's had a significant break leading up to that point. Yeah. Agreed. So I know you don't like selling stuff. Maybe you but could buy puts. This might be the opportunity. What do you think? Does your mouse have a right click button? It, it does. I mean, it's on there. It's, it's pretty dusty because we don't use it very often, but, but. <laughs> we don't use it. The editorial way, the royal yeah, way <laughs> is your left click button, like really worn, but your, your right click button is like fresh. It's so oh, like, yeah. ne- it's just never been clicked. It's like a new mouse. The right side's new. The left side's used. Well, speaking of something you don't probably don't want to buy just yet. Ooh. Peace corn. I don't think after today you'd want to buy that just yet. Yikes. No. So what's interesting about this one is that just looking at the last two candles, this is today's close. It's already closed. 
Yep. This is yesterday, right? So you had a potential hammer, but that body, you want that for it to be a true hammer, you'd want it to be green, right? A pretty significant rejection off the low, close near the high of the day. That's a typical like hammer formation. This is not where you closed below the open and thus like the red body. But what kind of, you know, cemented that was just basically, it's not the, uh, what's the expression? It's not the first trip to a price that scares people. It's the second and third times. Yeah. You know, we went right back to closing. Basically, what was this low? 4, 4.43? Today's close? 4.43. Closed on yesterday's low. Uh-oh. I tell you what, man. I think I've had a, a lot of people that called in asking what was going on in corn just because of that massive wick that we made yesterday getting close to the close. And it all kind of came right after... I'd say noon, right? I mean, getting yeah. kind of into the close, we rallied ourselves back, looking this like a was, bullet. This candle. was yesterday? Yeah. And then today, no dice. So this was, okay, so this is a 15 minute. So we can kind of look at some of the intraday activity. So this was yesterday's. This is yesterday's activity, basically, yeah. right here. Yeah. And a nice little popper towards around noon central that stuck. So mm -hmm. to your point, rallied back, but then just basically gave it back during the overnight session and then some. Right. But what's interesting about this too is that ever since you made this lower high right here, it just hasn't really looked back. It tried to come back in and then had an immediate failure. And since then, it's just been, boop. see you later, alligator. Well, and you start looking at a weekly. I just got a weekly pulled up here. Of okay, yeah, let, me, let me do that. Bam. And uh, I mean, it's not looking bullish, right? <laughs> is that your way of saying it's bearish? It's not I, looking bullish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trying to. Trying to be a glass half full kind of person. I mean, it's not exactly looking that bullish. <laughs> but again, so, you, you've got support down at $4, which has been a big, I'd say, industry talking point of oh, some sure. people are $5. Some people are thinking we're going to go to $4. You look at the support at $4, and I would likely be a buyer at $4. So this the longer term, like secondary stuff, cross zero here. This was last week. Getting some confirmation here. So the momentum is clearly turned. Mm -hmm. There's room here on the RSI for it to continue to break before it's considered oversold. So to your point, this $4 mark, right? basically this low right here could turn into a bit of a magnet. Um, right. I don't know that much about fundamentals with regard to grains. You'd want to check out grain feed, Jim, Jake, and all those guys. Right. But um, is it like a weather market? Is it, is it El Nino? I don't know. Oh! The tropical storms must bow before El Nino. To your point, though, this looks weak, and you've got some room here on the weekly, the daily. I mean, to, to close on yesterday's low after settling off the low the way it did, even though it wasn't a true hammer, that's just a sign of weakness. This is the second trip to a price that scares people. So, and, you know, you've managed to stick a close below all this, too. Right. This guy right here. That's no good. To, which I think yesterday got the bulls excited because we could not settle below 450. And then today they came back and said, Boop. Hold not on. so fast. Not so fast. Not so, not so fast, Richard. Speaking of not so fast. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Wheat. Wheat. December wheat. We have a guy in our office that bakes bread, Jan. He, he's excellent baker. But he's got to start using some, he's, he's gotta start using some more wheat. He does. I mean, it just gets getting cheaper. He's just not making enough bread. Keep pumping out that bread, Jan. Keep pumping out that bread. Let's go. There's not really much. We just want to bring this one up just because it's just been a straight. I mean, we've had, this is May 31. Is really, I, or really, I mean, you could go back and look at it from May 28th. So in about a calendar month's worth of trade, you've had two close higher. Yeah. Two. That's it. The rest have been closes lower. Say goodnight. That's just, that's brutal. And they're not small moves by any means. No. I mean, they're not limit moves, right? But no, but still, you're talking like you're, 12, 20 cents in some of these. Yeah, I mean, you're talking. This is seven fifty. Now we're knocking on five eighty two. So over a dollar, dollar ten, dollar fifteen a bushel. That's a massive move. And you think about like the percentage difference between seven, you know, seven fifty and five eighty two. Right? I'm not a math wizard over here. Maybe you are. I know. No. Like you can use your left click button on the calculator. That does work. Yeah. I, let, let me ask you this. If we get down to 570, would you be a buyer there? I don't think you can, like, it's it's hard to say that you want to be a buyer here until this chart tells you that there's at least some sort of support. Right. I mean, right? we're only 12 cents away from there. And, and like, you know, here's here's an interesting example, right? I just kind of zero, zoomed in on these two days. Big break. Oh. You started to get some sign of strength, but you had no follow through the next day. And then, boop. 
No, sir. Here's an interesting one. Check out the monthly real quick. Look at the engulfing (laughs) handle. Good. I mean, like you got to be super careful of it going. Yeah. Like the momentum there just heading back down below, not below, but I mean, around, you know, five bucks becoming a magnet. Right. And monthly has room to go here, right here, and then the momentum clearly shifting to the downside. So, yeah, it's no good. I mean, to answer, can I try to answer your question? Like, when do you at least get out of shorts or something like that? Or when do you start considering, like, is it time to get long? I think you need to have, like, this is a great pattern right here. You have this inside day mm-hmm. right here, right? And then an open higher the next day, inside out three bar pattern, right? That's a great pattern for like, at least like a reversal type pattern too. So something like that. I would also be looking for some sort of like, to your point, like it doesn't have to necessarily have to be on a weekly or excuse me, on a very long-term chart. But imagine like if this was a red candle and this was a green and it completely engulfed the previous day's range. Mm-hmm. And you got confirmation. The next day, right? In some way, right? Right. You ideally would want to open higher from the previous day's high but at least like see some sort of open higher that yeah it's like it's just it's hard to say like to look at that that, that daily chart let's go back real fast well I think it's hard to mean, look at that daily and just say like when do you want to buy it it's just like well, show I mean, me some something what did you always tell me whether it's greens or dairy no matter what it is it's it's always hard to catch a falling knife and it feels like that is exactly what we have going on in wheat right yeah. now yeah i mean you got pretty bloody right here right because you you likely weren't buying it on this day. Like maybe you took a shot at towards the end of the day, or at least like kind of getting it like some sort of confirmation. Like, Hey, we're going to close higher here today. Yeah. And then boop, boop, boop. And then, not yeah, so much. It's, yeah. So it's easy. Yeah. To your point. I mean, like it's when do you want to try to catch the falling knife? I, my answer would be no. I, I'd look for, I'd look for some sort of engulfing pattern, like that three bar pattern that we just looked at the inside out day over here, right here. That's a great mm-hmm. example of, of like, Maybe it's time to, at the very least, get out of shorts and buy calls or do something to that effect. It's also, you know, just do something to mitigate yeah. any sort of like if you have some short exposure that you or short like hedges on or something like that. But yeah, it's that's a tough one. You have to have something. There's there's something that has to appear on the chart to make you want to own it or at least get out of shorts. So far, that has not come to fruition. So this is not exactly like your type of episode, by the way. There's a lot of selling going on. A lot of selling. A lot of red on the. A lot of a lot of red. A lot of red. But you know that said, let's let's try to let's try to fill that glass up at least halfway. Like that's right. How's cost or dairy doing with milk versus feed and other like all that like on a margin perspective? Mm-hmm. So I think that's the hard part. Everyone everyone talks about margins, and here's my here's my pet peeve with talking about margins is oh. milk was higher, feeds lower. But let's consider everything else in the world that's higher. You've got higher labor costs. You've got higher fuel costs. You've got higher. Everything else is higher. So when people want to talk about margins, you know, getting better, mm-hmm. it might have been there for a little bit, especially if you were in a class four space, if you were in a purely cheese space. I've talked to guys who the margins aren't any better now than they were five, six months ago. Okay. So you're saying is don't look at, you know, milk minus corn and meal and say exactly. that things are rosy over here. Exactly. And I think that's what a lot of people like to look at and say, oh, margins are getting better. People are making money. That's not true. Negative ghost rider. That's not true for everyone. Right. It might be it might be true for a certain amount of individuals, but it's not true for every single entity out there. We'll put it that way. So can we put like a name tag on yours? It's just negative Nancy on uh, like no. I'm, I'm, being positive. I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's all right. That's all right. Telling it how it is. It's just being as real as humanly possible here. Like little tears. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Those are the three charts for Andy and I in Tech Talk this week. I'd like to give a big shout out to Paige and Lexi for doing the behind the scenes editing on these yeah. awesome videos that we do. Please like, subscribe. We're still trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. We're close, right? Aren't we? Close. You, you, you close. Every, I think every week you say that we're, we're super close. <laughs> we're getting super close. We just, we're we just need close. a few more. We get to 10,000 subscribers and I got a big surprise for everybody. More than what Phil already promised me about going to the moon. I've got another massive surprise for everyone. If we get to 10,000 subscribers, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be good. Can we get a hint? Mm, it has to do with Chris Farley. So, okay. with that hint being said, if you're a big Chris Farley fan, Tommy Boy fan, get us to 10,000 subscribers. You will not be disappointed. I can promise you that. Promise. That's a promise. That's a promise. That's a promise. Well, everyone. Are you, uh, how old are you, by the way? 
33. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, if we got to 10,000 subscribers, were you going to, like, run for president? But I think you have to be 35 to do that. Give me a couple of years. We'll do it. A couple of years? You're going to we'll do, do it. Coster 2028? <laughs> get, put it on the sticker. Like, if we get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm putting your name on the ballot and I'm voting. <laughs> put it on the sticker. Let's yeah, get it there. Great. Awesome. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Cody, here's Cody Coster on CNN talking about foreign policy. <laughs> I'll talk about foreign policy all day. Let's go.